Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Your mouse, keyboard, joystick, gamepad and other input devices allow you to interact with the world of the game you play. So when you press a button then you want that the game responds to that input as fast as possible so that the game feels responsive. Now it would be ideal to have no delay at all so that when you press the fire button on your input device you instantly get the result on your monitor, in this case that you fire your gun. Sadly it's not possible to have no delay at all and keeping that delay to a minimum is quite a challenge for every developer. But what is affecting the delay between the button and the pixel? Every input device has a polling rate, which defines how many updates it can send per second. So at a polling rate of 125, a mouse can send an update every 8 milliseconds. And at 1000, it's an update every 1 millisecond. Gaming mice usually offer a minimum polling rate of 500, which means that an update can be sent every 2 milliseconds. So when you go to the configuration software of your mouse, then you should always choose the highest value for the polling rate, as otherwise you increase your input lag of that device. Now, once the signal from your input device reaches your PC or console, it will get picked up by the operating system and made available to the game, which will then process the input and that means that the next delay is coming from the CPU. Once the game is done with the calculations, your GPU or graphics card needs to render a new image and that will take some time. Once that image has been rendered, it's ready to be sent to the display. Now if you play at 30 frames per second, then you get a new frame every 33 milliseconds. At 60 fps, it's a new frame every 16 milliseconds. And at 144 fps, the frames are 7 milliseconds apart. So if the input data is 1 millisecond late, then you will miss the next frame transmission and that will increase your input lag by an additional frame. VSync is a very big factor here. When you enable it, then it will sync your frame rate to the refresh rate of the monitor in order to eliminate the tearing issue. The downside is that this increases the frame transmission delay and that means more input lag, which you will see in the test results. An alternative to VSync is Nvidia's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync, which will also increase your input lag, but not as much as VSync does. However, monitors which support these features are quite expensive. And finally, once the image reaches the monitor, it will need some time to process the input and draw the image that it received. The display response time is an indicator for how fast the display is. However, you have to be aware that the actual delay of your monitor is higher than this grade to grade display response time value. So that's the button to pixel or input lag in layman's terms. Now, how do you measure it? The guys from Blurbusters.com came up with a pretty nice method. What we need is a high-speed camera, where mine can record 1200 frames per second. And then we need a gaming monitor which has a high refresh rate and a low response time, as well as an USB gaming mouse which provides a polling rate of at least 1000. Now to measure the time between pressing the left mouse button and the display showing the response to that action, I connected an LED directly to the left mouse button. This means that when I press the left mouse button, the LED will light up almost instantly. So if I record this with my high speed camera, then I can count the frames between the point where I see the LED light up and where I see that the gun starts to fire. I've done the same to my Xbox One controller so that I was able to test Overwatch on the Xbox One and compare the results of the gaming mouse to the Xbox One controller on the PC. For the actual tests, I've set all graphic options to low and disabled triple buffering as that also increases your input lag. So after many many hours of testing and counting frames, I got the following results. When Overwatch uses a display refresh rate of 144Hz and runs at 300 frames per second, then the longest button to pixel delay was 51 milliseconds. On average it was 47 milliseconds and the lowest measured delay was 40 milliseconds. But only very few people will play the game at such high frame rates. So for the next test I used display based for the limit FPS option, which keeps the frame rate to around 150 when you use a refresh rate of 144Hz. And that didn't really have any impact on the delays. After that I disabled the FPS limit again and enabled VSync, which as I explained earlier will sync your frame rate and the refresh rate of the monitor in order to eliminate tearing. And as you can see I was not lying when I said that this increases your button to pixel lag. For the last test I disabled VSync again and then selected 30 FPS for the limit FPS option, which means that the game ran at exactly 30 frames per second. And that results in a massive increase of the input lag. 
So these are the results from a 144Hz gaming monitor. But most gamers out there still use 60Hz monitors, so what kind of input lag do they have to deal with? To find out, I changed the display refresh rate from 144 to 60Hz, checked the monitor status to make sure that it really switched to 60Hz and then repeated the same tests again. Now at 300 FPS the button to pixel lag is about the same as we got when the game ran at a display refresh rate of 144Hz, which is a bit odd but we will get to that in a second. When I enable display based in the limit FPS setting then the game runs at about 70 FPS and that increases the input lag by about 10 milliseconds. Now the reason why the input lag can be lowered by running the game at a frame rate higher than the refresh rate can be found in how the game processes the input. So it's normal that we get 10 milliseconds less delay with 300 FPS at 60 Hz. However, it's a bit odd that we do not see the same difference in the 144 Hz tests. Sadly, I cannot tell you why this happens in Overwatch. The effect of VSync at 60 Hz is also pretty shocking, especially when you compare it to the results from the 30 FPS test. I have repeated these tests multiple times with the most up to date drivers. Always check the frame rates as well as the active display refresh rate to make sure that these results that you see here are accurate. So that was with my G502 gaming mouse which uses a polling rate of 1000. Now since I already had an LED connected to one of the buttons of my Xbox One controller, I was curious to find out how that one performs. And as we can see it delivers pretty much the same results as the gaming mouse which is quite interesting. So these are the button to pixel delays that we get on the PC. Now how about the Xbox One version of Overwatch? In the first test I connected my Xbox One to the same gaming monitor and used an USB cable to connect the controller to the Xbox One. With that setup the longest measured delay was 101 milliseconds, the average was 96 milliseconds and the lowest was 93 milliseconds. So that's about 30 milliseconds more than what we get on the PC when we use the display based frame rate limiter which provides about 70 FPS. Then I unplugged the USB cable from the controller and tested the input lag again in the wireless mode, which did not really have an impact on the delay, which means that using a wired connection for your controller won't decrease your input lag. So that's what you get when you use a gaming monitor for your console. But console players usually don't use gaming monitors, they have ordinary TVs like my Samsung here, which according to the specifications has a display response time of 16 milliseconds. So I enabled the so called gaming setting inside of the menu, connected the console directly to the HDMI port of the TV that Samsung suggests that you should connect the console to and then I repeated the same tests again. And the result is not pretty as the button to pixel delay is almost 50% higher compared to the gaming monitor. So we really have a lot of results here, but are these good or bad? To find out we have to compare Overwatch to other first person shooters like Battlefield 4 and CSGO. So on PC with my gaming monitor a refresh rate of 144Hz at 300 frames per second using the lowest graphic settings and my Logitech G502 we get these results in Overwatch. Battlefield 4 provides nearly the same button to pixel delay under the same conditions while CSGO provides the shortest delays of these three games, which means that there is still some room for improvement. So what can we learn from these tests? If you have a monitor that can do more than 60Hz then make sure that the game is actually using that higher refresh rate. If you have a 144Hz monitor but can't enable rates higher than 60 then make sure that you use the right cable. Dual link DVI or DisplayPort cables support refresh rates higher than 60Hz at 1080p. Then you should check if there is a configuration software for your mouse which allows you to choose the polling rate, where a higher rate means less delay. You should also always try to maintain at least a stable 60 frames per second to ensure that the game feels responsive. If your system is powerful enough then you can try to go for even higher frame rates which will further reduce the input lag even on 60Hz monitors. You should also consider to lower some of the graphics settings in order to increase your frame rate, because you will get used to downgraded graphics but not too unpredictable or very high response times. If tearing is bothering you then you should consider to go for a free sync or a G-Sync monitor as V-Sync just adds way too much delay as you have seen in the results. And when you are on console then you should really consider to go for a gaming monitor because that's the only way for you how you can decrease the input lag. 
I hope that you found the info useful that I provided here and if you would like to support me to do more videos like these where the testing takes quite a lot of time and sadly requires powerful and expensive hardware then please consider to become one of my patrons over at patreon.com, the link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care, my name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.